Hiya friends, and welcome to Vault Hunters. This is going to be a series of various guides on how to help you out in your Vault Hunters world. This video is going to be showing off different ice spawner setups you can use for mob killing, as we can see under me right here. We are currently in my survival world with my complete mob farm build. We'll be going over to our creative world in a moment to show off various ways that you can set this up depending on what mobs you have unlocked. Before we head over there, the key things that I use is dark utilities and modular routers. There's other things you can use as well, as we list in our creative world. But these are my personal preferences. I find they are the fastest and smoothest experience when it comes to mob killing. The one key that I have found is making the inside area 11 by 11. That way... You can spawn ghasts in this because they require a 5x5 five five space in order to spawn. Let's head over to the creative world to show off the various ways you can make this farm. Stick around to the end to see my whole personal setup that I have going on here. For your ice spawner setup, there are a few key systems that you're going to need. The first one is your mob gathering system. There's a few options for this one. My personal preference is using dark utilities with their vector plates the issue with dark utilities and its vector plates are the fact that certain mobs don't seem to like them very much for example squids you can see that they glitch out quite a bit i don't have the killing system on right now which doesn't help them going back and forth a lot can cause issues but as you see over time they will die from being out of water so even the ones that are going back and forth you can still handle perfectly fine Obviously, this setup doesn't work for shulkers and phantoms, but that is absolutely fine. There's other ways to deal with that. Also with gas, that's why we have these spikes. Your other option, if you don't have dark utilities, is using water over ice. Using ice, specifically blue ice, will make it super quick to push everything into the middle, so you don't need to worry so much. The issue with squids for example is that they can actually swim in this so it doesn't work so well let's grab something that'll be a bit better for it test it with a wither skeleton egg as you can see they get pushed into the middle pretty easily obviously our killing system here doesn't work for wither skeletons because they don't die from fire we will go over a better killing system for them soon Another way you could do it is with create fans. You put them along one side, have one edge open, and it'll push them all that way as long as they are going fast enough. That feels like a pretty expensive way to do it, and personally would not be the way that I go, but is a way to do it if you don't like the water setup that we have here, and you don't have dark utilities. There might be other ways to do this setup with things like Mechanism, Thermal Expansion, Botania. I haven't played around with those myself, so I'm not 100% sure, but it's worth playing around with. Another key to your Ice Spawner setup is your mob killing system. There are quite a few ways you could do this one. My personal preference is using modular routers in the middle here. They have not copied from my survival world, so I'll show them off in my survival world at the end of this video but essentially we have these five here set up as a killing system with vault swords so they don't use durability damage and that way it will constantly be punching up and up and up the only issue with that is you also do need a power source because the activator module won't be able to attack nearby entities if you don't have power going to these modular routers but if you're at the point where you have eye spawners chances are you already have a power system another option for killing certain mobs you could put campfires in the middle personally i would recommend soul campfires over the normal campfires just because they do a little more damage to the mobs the issue with using campfires is certain mobs they won't work on for example blazers and weather skeletons and i think zombie piglins it also wouldn't work for witches because they can drink potions of fire resistance. If you wanted to do something else instead, you could use bamboo spikes. They're just a little slow at killing things if they aren't the instant damage 2 ones. The one issue with using instant damage 2 
is that actually counts as healing for certain mobs mostly the undead mobs so zombies and skeletons so you would more than likely want to use the plain spikes instead that will be able to kill basically everything that goes on to it your other option would be to use a player damage plate you could put a player damage plate into the middle here and make all of these fast vector plates go up to the player damage plate like so the one issue I have with a player damage plate system is the fact that you can't have looting on it like you could with a sword and a modular router. And also certain mobs will kind of bounce over it with using the vector plates. So personally, that is why I go for modular routers myself. But this is a very easily customizable setup for you. So you can do it various ways. There's probably other ways to do it, for example, lava, or you might be able to find ways with mechanism and botania and so on and so forth, but I personally haven't played around with those. It's worth going into a creative world and just playing around with it and seeing what works. The last key to your Iceborne setup is your item collection system. This is a one that I find the most trickiest, personally. I find the easiest way to have an item collection system would be to use modular routers with a vacuum module. That way you can vacuum everything up nice and quickly and send it to drawers or chests, whatever you prefer. If you don't have modular routers, you could maybe put a hopper underneath a player damage plate or hoppers underneath the campfires or spikes. Those are a bit slow though. The other way to do it could be with a minecart hopper. Those are a bit faster than normal hoppers. But once again, it can be a bit slow when it comes to organizing the items. Once again, there's probably more item collection systems from things like Create, Mechanism, Thermal Expansion, Botania. I haven't played around with those myself, so I'm not 100% sure. My preferred is always modular routers. There are a couple of extras you can add to your spawner setup, and we will show those off in our survival world. Let's go on over. Okay, now that we're back in our survival world, I can show you my personal setup and what I have found to be the most smoothest experience you can have when it comes to ice spawners. Let's start with our killing chamber. There's a few key details to this. We've got our fast vector plates going into the middle. You could use the higher tier ones, but personally, I went for the fast ones so that they worked best with things like squids. Secondly, we've got two methods of killing mobs. Our main method is five modular routers in a T here. All five of these modular routers have a vault sword in it, an activator module, an energy upgrade, a security upgrade and a camo upgrade. The reason why we go for a vault sword is so that it doesn't take durability damage so we don't have to worry about swapping out these swords at all they're good to go. All of these vault swords have attack damage as a prefix to make them a bit stronger. I did also put sweeping hit chance on each of them but that isn't necessary depending on what you like to use. We have an activator module that is how the vault sword works we have it set to attack nearby entity and we have the entity as random in range entity that's just my personal preference closest should also work but i prefer the random in range the energy upgrade is so that the vault sword actually works the way that the activator module works is in order to attack nearby entity it has to have power so we actually have a modular router up there with our ender cell from power that is sending the power down to these five modular routers. I'll show that off soon. That is why we need an energy upgrade so that the modular router can actually take energy into it. We use the security upgrade purely to make the vault swords work. If you do not have a security upgrade, you would have to use vanilla swords. And the issue with vanilla swords is they're not as strong. And they also take durability damage in the modular routers. So they don't work for very long and you would have to be constantly replacing the swords in here. So that is why we use a security upgrade. And then the last one in these is a camouflage upgrade. That is purely just for aesthetics because I like to make things pretty. Completely unnecessary if you do not mind. 
the other two modular routers we have down here is our modular router for picking up the items. We've made sure to put enough speed and stack upgrades in there so that it can pick up a stack worth of items at a time and send them nice and quickly to our drawers or our chest up there. We have a few modules in here to help us out. The first one is a vacuum module. That is how we vacuum up all of the items that are in the range. I've purposely made it so that the range only does like this area and below the glass so that if any items are dropped up there, they don't get vacuumed up. The next key part is we have three sender modules. You can probably do this a different way, but this is personally how I like to do it. Our first one is to send glass bottles only to the drawers. That is because for our void module, our void module is voiding potions. But because of the settings in the void module to make it void every single potion that it can pick up, it would also void bottles. So that's why we have a separate one before the void module so that it sends the glass bottles to the drawer before it tries to void it. Our second one is a sender module with tridents. This is just a personal preference. I send the tridents up to that chest there because sometimes you need tridents as a vault alter ingredient, which I found out the other day. Our third sender module has no whitelist or blacklist, and it is just to send every single item it can up to our draw controller that is up there. That way it puts all the items in the drawers for us and we don't need to worry. Our last module in this one is our void module. This is to void all of our items that we don't need to collect. So for example, things like swords, armor, bows, banners, potions, all of that kind of stuff. The stuff that we don't actually need to keep. You don't have to void that stuff, but I find it's best to. That way you just don't have to worry about chests filling up and your system getting overrun by everything. Our other modular router that's down here is purely to vacuum up XP. If you put a XP vacuum augment inside of a vacuum module, that allows you to vacuum up XP bottles. We also have the range upgrade so that it can do it within this whole area here, but not up there. And that is set to send all of those XP bottles up to the drawers up there. Other key details we have to down here. We have a redstone link connected to one of the levers up there that allows us to turn the spawner on and off because we've got it set to redstone on. So that way, if there's still an egg in the spawner, but we just want to turn off the spawner, but don't want to remove the egg for some reason, we can very easily. Another key to down here is we have the bamboo spikes in a kind of grid pattern in a way. These bamboo spikes are here purely to kill ghasts and the odd phantom. If you wanted this to work better for phantoms, you could have a lot more bamboo spikes. But personally, I don't mind that it kills phantoms slowly or doesn't really work because I don't really need phantom membranes all that much. So it's not a bother to me. I personally use the ones with instant harming too. That way it's nice and quick. It will kill ghasts within one to two hits. The issue with using the bamboo spikes with the instant damage is the fact that you need a lingering instant damage 2 potion for it. In order to get that, you will need to use one pog per three potions to make it lingering. Otherwise, you won't be able to apply the instant damage 2 effect to the spikes. I find they're the easiest way to go when it comes to killing ghasts. Another really important step is to make sure you have blocks above the spawner. That way mobs aren't spawning above the spawner and not dropping off because they can get stuck up there. And that is why we have the redstone link on the bottom of the spawner, not one of the sides. Because if you have it on the side, mobs can actually get stuck on top of it as well. Now if we come up here, we can look at our other systems for it. One of the setups that I like to use personally is a system to use modular routers to send and pull the eggs to and from the spawner. This way, we don't have to go down there and manually do the eggs every single time. And it also allows us to put certain eggs in the spawner that normally you wouldn't be able to do yourself. 
for example, if you try to manually put a iron golem egg into the spawner, it won't let you, which means it won't normally work. But if you use a modular router to send it into the spawner, it will work. Let's just grab a random system here. So let's say we wanted to kill some strays. I can put some strays into this modular router here that has a sender module. It has some stack upgrades so it can take all of the strays at once. And we have it set to pulsed. That way, if we just press this button here, as you can see, we no longer have the eggs in here and they will be down into the spawner there. You can tell when I turn my spawner on and it starts killing our strays. You can see it's quite efficient and you don't really have to worry about it and you can leave it at that because the bows that they drop and the armor that they drop will be voided instantly. Let's turn that off. Let's say I wanted to grab this egg back out. I can just click this button on this modular router here that has a puller module and it will pull the eggs back out. It also has it set to pulse and has stack upgrades to be able to send as many up uh, as many eggs as we want. You could always have a lever instead of having a button and stack upgrades and have it set to high or low. That way when you turn the lever on or off, it will push the eggs in just a bit slowly, that's all. I personally prefer the pulse with the stack upgrades. That way it's nice and quick and seamless and I just have to push a button. I don't have to worry about turning the lever on or off. We have all of our hostile mob eggs held in one of the chests and then all of our passive in the other. That's just personal preference. I like how that's organized and makes it a bit easier for me to go, okay, I want this egg in particular. It's passive, I go into there. It's hostile, I go into there. Another important part we have here is our ender cell. This is to send our energy down to these modular routers. So we have a modular router right above it that has an energy distributor module with all of those selected. That way it can send the energy down to all five of our modular routers down there. It has a few energy upgrades. That way it can send the energy quicker so our modular routers down there do not run out of energy. It also has some muffler upgrades, which I'm planning on putting into those ones down there as well. The muffler upgrade allows you to not have to worry about the lines or anything like that. So it helps reduce lag. As you can see, one will suppress the sound effects, two or more will suppress the particle effects, and three or more will suppress the router active animation. I personally use three just so that it's nice and seamless. Another thing we have is this chest here. This is all the stuff that we want to void. That way, if I want to remove something and reset the filter, I've got everything in here already and I don't have to worry about trying to find the items all over again. The cool thing with the item, the bulk item filter, is if you shift right click a chest, it will bring the items from the chest into the filter. Obviously, because we already have all of those items in the filter, it didn't add anything, but you can add items just by putting them in the chest and shift right clicking. It makes it nice and easy. That is the filter for our void module. Another key to our system is our draw setup here. Our draw setup has everything that will drop from the mobs we would be killing. The only thing I'm missing to my knowledge is bamboo. And that is because we don't require bamboo from pandas. Because I just have a system set up at my barn area to get bamboo there. I find it's much quicker another way, so I don't bother use pandas for it. We do have carrots, potatoes, and poisonous potatoes in here, though, because zombies have a chance to drop those. And we do also have seagrass, because that's a nice, easy way to farm seagrass from turtles. The only other thing I would be missing is poppies. I haven't put them in the system just yet, purely because I don't have an iron golem egg just yet. But once I get one, I will be putting poppies in the system so that it can put the iron in here and the poppies away as well. All of the drawers have one of the storage upgrades made from Vault Diamonds. That's personal preference. You don't have to do it, but I find it's easiest. I probably won't need more than 128 stacks of each item. The only ones that don't have the upgrades are the compacting drawers because they can already hold plenty of items in them. 
every single drawer also has a void upgrade in it. That way, if one of them gets full and we accidentally leave the system running, it will void the extra items so that it doesn't lag out our world by causing too many item entities. And as you can see, we do have these compacting drawers down here. All of the different metallic ore items you can kind of get from different drops. That makes it a bit easier for us to store all of these. We also have XP bottles, which makes it super handy if we ever need XP on the go. This drawer setup is also connected to my refined storage system. As you can see back here, we have our external storage. It has its priority set to 10. So if we happen to get any of the items from mobs from an outside source that's not to do with this, it will put them into here so that I'm not filling up my refined storage system. It's also set to only work without redstone signal. That way, if I want to look at overflow in my refined storage system, I don't have to worry about it because I can just turn this off so it won't read into these drawers anymore. And we also have our network receiver and a wireless transmitter just to make things nice and seamless so we don't have to worry about cabling. And this also allows us to use our wireless crafting grid in the spawner setup. And that one is connected to here and I've symbolized it by showing chests to let me know that is for our storage. We also have this redstone link here. This one turns the modular routers on and off that are down there. So if we just go down there, you can see that we have some relayers to send the signal up into the modular routers, some redstone dust, and then just a redstone link here. So this will turn off the modular routers that are to kill the mobs. That way, if you want to kill the mobs yourself, or if you want to pick up the mobs in animal jars without them dying, you can do that too, nice and easily. And we have this box of tridents here purely because they are a bolt alter ingredient at higher levels, as I found out the other day. And so that way we have a bunch stored in case our bolt alter ever asks for them. They wouldn't work in the drawers unless they were fully repaired and unenchanted. So that's why we have it going into a chest instead of the drawers. Okay, so that is our Iceborne is set up. Just to recap what we've discussed, we have to have the size of the mob killing chamber to be 11 by 11 on the inside. If you're counting the walls, it would be 13 by 13. That way it can fit ghasts as they require a 5 by 5 space. You have your mob gathering system. Personally, I like to use dark utilities, but you could use water with ice. You could use create fans. You could probably find another source as well. Then we have our mob killing system. Personally, I like to use modular routers for the looting aspect of them. But you could also use dark utilities, spikes, campfires for most mobs. Some of them won't work. And there's probably other ways to do it as well that I haven't listed. We've got our item collection system, which personally I like to use modular routers as it's quick and seamless and can vacuum so the items don't actually have to touch the modular router. But you could also use hoppers, minecart hoppers. I'm assuming there's probably a way to do it with Botania and other mobs as well. And then we've got our few extras like sending the mob eggs to and from the system like we have below me right here. And then also ways to just turn on and off certain parts of the system. I hope this guide has been helpful to all of you. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I will have a look-see and respond to as many of them as I can. And if you have any other upgrades to this that I've missed that you think are really, really helpful, please do let me know in the comments as well. If you would like more guides like this, I am more than happy to make them for y'all. Please just let me know what ones you'd be interested in. I would also recommend checking out Hellfire Mage on YouTube as well. He makes some really, really great guides. Uh, personally, if you are a bit stuck with modular routers, he has made a brilliant modular router guide. I'll put that link in the description for y'all. Uh, he also recently made a mechanism guide, which looks very interesting if you would love to learn mechanism. I have other system setups like my crop farms and stuff like that. So if you guys would like to see that, I'm more than happy to show it off for y'all. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye.